This is Asian Insider and I'm Nirmal Ghosh. Over the weekend of the 20th of September, protesters in Bangkok, Thailand took over the Sanam Luang grounds adjacent to the Grand Palace and not in small numbers. There's always quibbling about numbers as an indicator of public support, but certainly tens of thousands were there. And many, if not most, were young people, which has been a characteristic of this new phase of protests against what is essentially Thailand's feudal bureaucratic elites. Remember, it is, after all, the Kingdom of Thailand. And Thai authorities have responded. Well over a dozen have been arrested, some released on bail and so forth. Remember, the government is an elected civilian government, but run by the same general, now prime minister, who in May 2014 staged a military coup against the government. So this time around, it is not about a populist leader using money and machinery and democratic elections to, in effect, challenge the status quo. This is a, quote, broad-based and organic youth movement on high school and university campuses across the country, challenging the established centers of power to reform and modernize. Those are words from a recent an article by Dr. Thitinan Pongsuthirak, Associate Professor at the Faculty of Political Science at Chula Nongkorn University in Bangkok, where he is also the Director of the Institute of Security and International Studies. Dr. Thitinan, welcome to Asian Insider and thank you for making time for us. So, Ali Kaap, it's good to see you again. So, you have written that Thailand... You have written that Thailand has arrived at a new juncture and while it is similar to other periods of unrest, it is also likely to prove profoundly different. Can you explain what you mean by that? What do we need to understand about what is going on in Thailand now? Okay, I mean, if you look at Thailand, uh, you know, this country has seen a lot of protests in the streets, demonstrations by the, the yellow shirts, the red shirts. Uh, over the last two decades of Thai politics, uh, we've seen a lot of unrest and uh, volatility up and down, up and down. Uh, is being um, punctuated by two military coups um, in 2006 and 2014, uh, two constitutions in 2007, 2017, and along the way, there have been a number of elections, 2001, 2005, um, 2007, 2011, and there were a couple of elections that were disqualified along that way. So basically, it's a story of uh, protests, demonstrations, elections, constitutions, military coups and judicial interventions. So a lot of people might be looking at Thailand to think, what is going on in this country? When, you know, when would this end? Uh, when would it have some stability? Uh, this is what I mean by new juncture. New juncture in the sense that all that we've seen before, all the demonstrations, you know, they happened uh, in the previous reign, the era, the throne of King Rama the IX, King Pumipo the Dead. But now with the new reign under King Rama the Tenth, the successor to the throne, uh, it's been, uh, you know, a few years now of this range uh, since December 2016. You can kind of see Thailand's never been here before, and that is very new because this, the seven decades under the previous reign was, uh, um, was profound because a lot of people, you know, people in Thailand, they feel a, a connection, a, a respect, and, and kind of a, a bond with, uh, with the previous king. Uh, with the new king, uh, you know, the institution, they still feel some affiliation, some some associations, some connection with. But new monarch, you know, after seven decades, of course, it's going to be different for Thai people. And now um, the new monarch, um, uh, His Majesty is being challenged because a lot of people are coming up and saying, you know, monarchy needs to be reformed. But uh, what I want to say is that we're seeing this, uh, this is a pent up, pent up uh, protest movement. Before we had the red shirts, if you look at the red shirts, you know, the, the kind of pro taxing, but also pro election, pro democracy. They had the same agenda, more or less, but they did not call for reforms of the monarchy. They actually worked within the previous system, the established system. But the, the young students, the student movement, they, they want to reform that system. They want to get out of that system. They want to have a new constitution, new election. They want the, the government, uh, the, the regime, to stop harassing, intimidating, persecuting them. In addition, they, have, uh, you know, they want to have a kind of a genuine uh, monarchy, constitutional monarchy. And by that, they mean a genuine constitutional monarchy. In the um, example of uh, the UK or Japan, uh, you know, with uh, the monarchy in balance, with uh, Thai democracy as an institution within the, the constitution, accountable, transparent, and then the empowering, uh, you know, democratic institutions uh, to keep balance, like the political parties, parliament, no more military coups, no more judicial interventions, 
um, and no national unity government, basically letting the people decide the future of Thailand. That's what the debate is. The, the new junction means basically new reign. And also the Thai economy has never seen this kind of contraction. Even before COVID-19, Thai economy was in trouble. Uh, it was falling behind. It had structural impediments, it had a middle income trap it could not get out of. It needed education reforms, skills, and so on, upgrading uh, of the economy. Uh, that was not happening. So with these young students, uh, you know, what they're looking for, what they're demanding is that they want their future back. You know, if the military coup in 2014 had done a better job, and what does that mean? That means that had it been a coup like 1991, let's say, uh, and it appointed a, a bunch of technocrats to run the economy, uh, move Thailand forward, uh -huh. move Thai, provide some future direction for Thai economy. I think these young people uh -huh. might be satisfied with that. They might have felt accommodated. I think that the bottom line for them, you know, they are, uh, there's a kind of uprising because they feel that they have no future because Thailand has gone nowhere. The military coup in 2014 ran Thai economy to the ground. Public debt, you know, we've been incurring more than $10 billion a year. And you look at directions ahead, nowhere. At the same time, they're looking at Vietnam. Vietnam is uh, catching up and Thailand is falling behind over the decades, falling behind South Korea, uh -huh. and, you know, Singapore and so on. So Thailand now is a laggard, uh, laggard it is almost the last economy uh, in terms of growth and development in, in ASEAN. This is what the young people are looking at. You know, in my generation, we grew up in the ninth reign. I think we've been socialized, we've been indoctrinated to respect the reign, but we also saw um, personally how uh, His Majesty, late Majesty, uh, devoted his, uh, his life and efforts for the country, right, for the people. So we feel that the bond, but the new people, new young generation, they're born millennials in the 21st century or the late 1990s. They have a very different reference point. So for them, they want a future. Um, they want reforms. They want time to move ahead. And until they get that, uh, we're going to see them more and more of them in the streets and on campuses. Um, I think now the, the challenge for them um, is that they, the student movement now uh, is going in kind of same direction, but in two different ways, basically. If you look around Thailand, you know, I'm a, I look at Singapore. Singapore has a way of uh, renewing itself, responding to public expectations and demands. Thailand has been accumulating grievances and expectations not being answered. If you, if you look at the country now, everywhere you look, you know, it's rotten. It needs to be reformed. Um, the bureaucracy, judiciary, the military, the military conscription is, is totally corrupt. Um, you look right. at the army, the navy, the air force. The weapons procurement is completely untransparent, uh -huh. um, unaccountable. Uh -huh. Right? Then you have this kind of uh, the institutions that in the senate, the constitution gives the senate a lot of power, and the senate is appointed by the military. So basically, it's a very rigged system. You look at education. Um, you know, the education system uh, is back in the cold war. Really, it's changed at the margin because technology has advanced, but otherwise. It's still very top-down, very rigid, very hierarchical. So Thailand has gone nowhere um, in that sense. And then the, all these reforms now, uh, one column of the student movement, they want to reform Thai institutions, broadly speaking, including the monarchy, but also including the military, the judiciary, the constitution, um, you know, the, the different uh, sections of the bureaucracy, you name it. Uh, but right. the other column that we saw over the last weekend, they, they basically want to kind of reform the monarchy first and foremost, and it seems like the only direction. So that's where the, the movement is now. Uh, do we want to reform all of Thailand, including monarchy, or just the monarchy first and foremost? So one of the points you've made in your writing is that there should be reform, not revolution. And of course, there's always this worry that this will end in suppression and bloodshed, right? How responsive how confident are you in the government of Prime Minister Prayut chan -ucha to handle this with the nuance and finesse that is required so that, you know, some compromise is reached in terms of this reform that is required? The government of uh, General Prayut uh, has not been violent so far. However, uh, they have conducted a kind of lawfare, uh, you know, issuing a lot of uh, arrest warrants and summons and uh, putting people on trials in court, in jail. Uh, that's a kind of a different kind of warfare. But um, I think that they want to avoid uh, violence because uh, if there's any violence, uh, it would likely come from the government because the students so far 
Uh, they've been uh, peaceful and uh, they've demonstrated, but uh, they've shown no signs of uh, conducting violence and the means of violence, the weapons and so on, with the, with the authorities. But if there's violence, um, General Puyut would likely not last. Um, so I think he has an incentive to, to, to maintain order without using violence and crackdown to suppressive uh, that we've seen in the, in the recent past. At the same time, this situation is also, I mean, untenable. Something we'll have to give uh, in the coming weeks and months because, um, you know, there's so much accumulation of grievances uh, of the pent-up reforms that Thailand has needed. Right. As you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat and his sister, who you know, succeeded him, he was Prime Minister briefly, uh, Yang Lak Shinawat. Now, since before 2006, and the 2006 coup was about, you know, uh, Prime Minister Thaksin, but since a couple of years before that, and since then, it has been basically about Thaksin Shinawat and his machinery, and the sort of specter of Thaksin sort of looms large of this populist, um, populist politician, right, and his family. Uh, is that no that that is no longer the case because you you're saying that this is an organic movement. It has started in high schools and camp college campuses and so forth, and significantly, of course, in Bangkok. It's not it's not a regional issue anymore with the northeast against the Bangkok elites and so forth. Could you sort of shed some light on that? Yeah, I think you know, when you were here back in 2006, coup, and of course, uh, uh, we both have been observing over the years, a couple of decades now, for me even longer. And, you know, the Thaksin party machine, uh, it was a mixed bag. I mean, on the one hand, uh, it was undeniable that they did win elections. Uh, at the same time, it's also undeniable that there were conflicts of interest. There, were, there was some graft. And, you know, back in, in that time, there was abuse of power. There was a war on drugs. Uh, there was a lot of violence from the, from the state, from the regime. Um, and then, you know, Thaksin sold his uh, vast conglomerates without paying a, a one baht of tax. Um, so there's a lot of uh, water under the bridge, um, but we have to also look at the Thailand in a broader sense. I mean, uh, people do have rights. People do have rights to, to be represented. And, um, you know, when you dissolve uh, their representative party, uh, they're not going to be happy. So that's why we saw a lot of wretches. I think, of course, in 2009, 2010, they were supported by the Thaksin Party machine. They were aligned to the Thaksin Party machine. And then, you know, eventually Ying Lat got elected um, with, uh, under the party banner. Um, and then there were the, the PDRC, the, the yellowish, uh, the new yellows mm -hmm. that protested against Ying Lak and kind of uh, laid the way for the coup in May 2014. Since then, you know, over the last six years, the military government had a free hand. They could have remade and reshaped Thailand any way they wanted. They had absolute power, more or less, including Article 44. This is a uh, uh, absolute decree. You can rule Thailand by decree without accountability. But they've made a big mess of it. The economy has gone nowhere. Politics is a big mess because they've come up with a constitution that is really uneven and really designed to ensure that the military remains in power indefinitely, uh, including a 20-year strategy plan, right? Um, so why are people upset? I think now, you know, there's a uh, lingering, I mean, a lot of people like me, you, uh, we have some bad you know, latent aftertaste from the Thaksin era of abuses. But now I think, uh, you know, after all of that, and over the last six years of military government and a, a kind of a, a controversial election in March 2019, I think we're at a different space now. Uh, you know, it's easy to, um, to label, to dismiss these students because, you know, they cannot think for themselves. They're too young. They don't appreciate Thai history. They don't, they don't know how things work. Um, you know, they're being, being paid by the U.S., by... Uh, by Thaksin and so on and so on, because they cannot think for themselves. Mm -hmm. When I hear this, um, you know, it reminds me of uh, the past. Uh, every time there's an uprising, there's a demonstration, there's always some smear campaign uh, to, you know, uh, assassinate uh, the character of the protesters, uh, to discredit them and so on. And we've seen this on both sides. But the student movement, uh, I, I see, you know, I look at them, and of course I've been teaching for, uh, you know, it's 27 years at this university, at Tulang Khan University. Um, and I looked at the student generations. This one, and I'm, I'm having class shortly, they're very proactive. And it's like they uh, you know, much more politically conscious to the level I've not seen before. So I think that these young people, um, they have uh, woken up to the fact that they've got no future. So when people talk about tax in the US and, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, anything is possible. I don't I have to see the evidence for that. But at the same time, you have to look at what they're saying. 
They're saying Thailand needs reforms. That's indisputable. Thailand has no future, has very dim future for themselves. That's indisputable. So I think that uh, we have to look at the merit of the case, look at what they're saying. Is it true or not? Um, before uh -huh. we start looking at, well, they, can they think or who's paying them? Well, it, could it be possible that they actually have genuine grievances? And at this time, I, I do think that grievances are very genuine and authentic. Okay, Ajahn Tijinan, on that note, thank you very much for your time. I know it's a busy, very busy morning for you out there. Thanks a lot for coming thank on Asian Insider. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thank All you. the best. Now, there have been periodic, prolonged, and eventually violent, in some cases, confrontations between protesters and the military. Two military coups in recent years, two new constitutions. Remember, Thailand is a country in transition. One has to hope that Thailand will find a peaceful way out of this particular crisis. For Asian Insider, I'm Nirval Ghosh.